A coronial inquest has been launched to investigate the use and abuse of prescription drugs. It's a problem many argue is on the rise. Why do you think people are dying from drugs that doctors prescribe them? I think it's lack of education. Let's turn now to the staggering number of Australians addicted to prescription drugs. Experts claim there is a simple solution to slash the death rate. A million people are hooked on medication. We'd also like to welcome the Millingtons here tonight, whose son and brother Simon is the focus of one of our stories here tonight. Margaret, welcome to you. Uh, your son <clears throat> died of an overdose two years ago. Can you tell us what caused that problem in the first place? What led to the crisis? When John and I got married, my, my dream was always to have a little boy first and I was always going to call him Simon and um, my dream came true in 1975 when Simon was born. He was a happy little boy, full of fun and laughter. Just loved to be involved and uh, never left at my side. There was nothing in his childhood to indicate any predisposition at all to, to addiction of any sort. He was just a normal young man growing up. All our lives changed um, in 1994 um, at 2 o'clock one morning when Simon didn't come home because he'd hit a power pole. We quickly got dressed and went out there and um, we were warned not to go near the car because of the state of Simon. He had multiple fractures throughout his body and um, the closed head, hinge, head injury was of great concern in the end. They were just pumping so much medication into him because he had so many injuries. Simon would sort of wake up and get agitated and um, he'd say, I need some more medication, need some more medication. And um, I, in the end, was fighting to get him more medication. Because I'd say, you know, I can't stand to see him crying like that. So I'd go and find the nurses and say, please, do something for him, you know. And it became a battle of the wits in the end. When he left the hospital, Simon's drugs escalated because he had, um, well, he was in charge of them then. It was this whole change in his demeanour and uh, his life was all about when my next medication is coming. He would seek drugs, not for pain, but for the drugs themselves. And that was probably the hardest thing for us and the realisation that, yes, we had a, uh, we had a, a, a son that was becoming addicted and that doctor saying to you, that um, do you realise Simon's a drug addict? You know, that was once again a knife in the heart. We realised, you know, we've got big trouble here. And uh, who do we turn to? What do we do? When Simon did start to wear out his welcome at the local doctors, because he was also aware, what are they thinking about me? You know, and when he went to the chemist, he would be thinking also, what are they going to think? You know, so suddenly you start and look, it becomes a deeper problem, a more emotional, personal problem. And um, he started to, to scout around further and further afield. There was nothing stopping him. You know, he'd get in a car and off he'd go. And I said to him at different times, why on earth would you go back to taking another pill when you know you've got to go through this? And he said, it's addiction, Mum. A real-time monitoring system was the one thing that um, we thought would, it's too late for Simon, but for anyone who's had an accident on the weekend, the new Simon's coming in now, a real-time monitoring system would definitely have stopped Simon, Simon's addiction and um, abuse of medication spiraling, spiraling out of control as it did. How hard is it for those doctors and nurses in, a, in an emergency ward to try and figure out what on earth's going on? What medications have they had? What should we be giving? What's, what's lethal, what isn't? Real-time monitoring gives them the tool so it would never happen again. Let's do something positive and at least make a start and slowly, slowly build on it. Let, let's get something in place so that Dr. So-and-so knows what Dr. so and is prescribing and save lives for a start. Let's do something positive now. We need to be saying to the government, 
this is important, we want it, and we want it as quickly as possible. Because if we don't do that, there's going to be more silence, and we can't let that happen.